partly why I do group crawls is that I can't control the energies that make it happen. No. Not completely. No. You know, I can't uh, force people on the ground and make them crawl. Ah! <laughs> you know? Ah! You know? So, I decided the fact that these kinds of works, that's what they're about. They're about trying to set something in motion and then it has a life of its own. I started Groot and Kraus in the late 70s, solo. And even at that time I realized uh, that the real power was in the group, but, but at the time it was just myself. It was just a, a leap of faith, if you will. And I, you know, and it was initiated by, at the time New York was having, uh, New York City was having a lot of fiscal problems, and there were many, many street people sleeping on the sidewalks and hallways and doorways. And I thought, um, what if all of these people en masse began to uh, move as one through the city? And that would be a, a great rebellion. And because I thought, these people are still people. They're in, in these bodies are the potential for action. And um, I thought, what if you could make that palpable to people? You know, that potential becomes actual. And also because I guess members of my family at the time, at that time, were on the street. My aunt, I think, was on the street at the time, my father, my brother. And my, my big fear was, in the city of New York, which I think at that time was 8 million people, what if I ran into them? Because yeah. that happens. Yeah. You know, many street people are very, you know, they wander. You never know. So I thought, you know, why not take this fear or this potential of my own? Of, 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 of. I see my brother, my mother, my, my aunt, or my father lying in the, in the gutter. And it's not a meeting of a devaluation. It's a meeting of evaluation or it's a meeting of value. When you really think about actually doing these things, yeah. uh, it's only in the irrational that you produce a kind of uh, sense. It's just not common sense. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it was a vision about common people. Yeah. It was an idea that no matter how low down you are, you still have vitality. Mm -hmm. The crawls initially, I didn't talk. And one day, a man actually accosted me on the street and forced me to talk. I don't think he knew that he was doing that. He was changing one of my rules. When, when you were doing the crawl with the flower in your hand? Yes, and this man, he simply, he was upset that a black man in a suit, this is before the Superman costume section period, and he simply said, he demanded, why are you doing this? Because he thought I was first uh, uh, ill or that I needed help. And, uh, and he was upset that I didn't. And he was more upset because I had hired a white videographer to film it. And I was paying this man. That really upset him. Why are you doing this to yourself? Don't you know this is giving black people a bad name? And uh, he, what he did was he forced me to change the roles of, my, of the work. And I think that sort of led to the Black Factory and that I realized that the work cannot be... It can be mute in a kind of protest way. That can be functional. But at a certain level, I think it has to unpack itself uh, as much as it can. It has to, the level of interaction, the layers have to, uh, you have to develop those layers. And one of those could be conversation. What is the term of the Just while you're sitting in the middle of the road. Uh, if you walk faster, you'll see all these crawling people. If you walk faster, you'll see all these crawling people. He's one of them. Good kid. 